I'm writing this here because, quite frankly, I'm afraid. It all started about a week ago. My older sister, for the sake of privacy, I'll be calling her Lisa, had asked me to watch her daughter, my niece. Lucy for her while she picked up some shifts at the diner she works at. I'm a pretty bad uncle. I'm absolutely horrible with kids. They just creep me out and they're so fragile and needy. I can barely take care of myself, but my sister pulled the you owe me card and yeah, I definitely owed her for bailing me out of some bad predicaments, so I reluctantly agreed. My sister is taking care of her kid by herself. The dad, well piece of shit, walked out on them, so she's trying her best and still taking care of me since we were kids so it was the least I could do. I took an Uber to their place. My place was pretty crummy, and it was easier to go about this on the kids' territory. They lived in an old little house in the middle of nowhere, so the rent's cheap. Lisa was already in her uniform when I walked through the front door, and she was in a rush. Hey, you're late, asshole. My shift starts in 20 minutes she hissed. I shrugged off her comment. So, where's the kid? Your lovely little niece, Lucy, is playing right now, she sighed. Listen, Luke, thanks a lot for doing this. It really means a lot to me. Hey, no need to get all mushy. I just gotta make sure she doesn't hurt herself and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. She's already eaten and her bedtime is at 9 sharp, okay? She ordered. I gave her a salute. Ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Dick, she muttered. I'll be back around 1 a.m., okay? And call me if anything at all happens. Go. You're late, I said as I closed the door on her. I walked around the living room. I have very little presence when it comes to family stuff. I think my niece is around three to seven years old, something like that. I faded away after her dad, Jack, left. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm a piece of shit, but Jack was something else. It took everything in me not to beat him at times the way he treated Lisa. I'm glad he's gone, and she deserves better. Walking around in this place just makes me feel off. I still remembered him, and that bothered me. I was getting lost in thought, and then snapped back to reality. I'm babysitting, already fucking up. I was already there for about ten minutes, and no sign of the kid. Great. Hey, kid. Come out. Come out wherever you are. I heard a faint giggle coming from behind the couch. Awesome. Creepy as hell. I slumped into the couch and quietly got onto the floor, creeping around and saw her. She's the spitting image of her mom, fair-skinned, long light hazel hair, deep brown eyes, and the cutest dimples. Boo! I shouted as loud as I could. She returned my scare with a smile, those damn dimples. I knew you were there, Uncle Luke. Oh, you don't say? Well, aren't you smart for a three-year-old? She grimaced. I'm five, she said with a huff. Yeah, 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 whatever, I said as I ruffled her hair. So we got a few hours till bedtime. What does a kid do until then? She reached her hand towards me. Come on, follow me. She said excitedly. I offered her the sleeve of my jacket, and she pulled me towards the hallway to a door adorned with different colored stickers and a small sign that says, Lucy. Let's play in my room, she declared. 
She led me into her room. It's what you would expect from a little girl's room. Looking around, everything in the room was almost pink. The room was surprisingly clean. The bed had Disney princesses on the sheets. A small wooden table was set up with countless stuffed animals. In the very back of the pile of plushies stood one that towered over the rest. It's a stuffed animal that looks like a black cat. It's a simple design with small beady green cat eyes, but its legs are stretched long with its feet plump, filled with something to keep it standing. It stood there in the corner, staring at me. I hated it. Jack gave Lucy this stupid plushie to her a while back, and it reminded me of him. Uncle Luke, come over here, Lucy demanded, pointing to a small purple children's tent in the corner of the room. Let's go camping. Uh, I think I'm a little big for that thing. She looked at me as if I just gave her the worst news in her life. So I sighed and squeezed into the play tent. We played for hours, pretending to eat marshmallows, drinking invisible tea. She gathered her stuffed animals and completely covered me in them. And we actually had a pretty decent conversation. Why aren't you here more? She blurted out. I'm busy. I got a lot to do. That's what he says, too, she said as she looked into her empty teacup. Who? She looked at me and smiled. Daddy! She exclaimed. My heart immediately sank, and I felt sick to my stomach. What do you mean, Daddy? Have you been seeing him around? Don't make jokes like that, kid! I couldn't help but raise my voice. She looked shocked. Her eyes slowly began to fill with tears. I brought her into a hug. Hey, sorry, sorry, I tried to comfort her. Don't say things like that. It upset your mom, okay? Your daddy was a bad man. He hurt your mom pretty bad. He was a mean piece of... Er, he was just a bad guy. She sniffled. He comes to my window at night. She whispered, after mommy goes to bed and it's really dark, but I can hear him crying outside. Be quiet, Lucy. I hear his tears falling. He's crying a lot, but I can't see his face. Lucy, that's enough. He says he's mad at mommy and he's mad at you. I pulled her in tighter. Please, that's enough. I pleaded. Before I knew it, I woke up, stuffed inside the tent with Lucy lightly snoring beside me. I crawled out, and as carefully as possible, I tucked her into bed. My back aches, but it was a fun night. I wish I could have had more of them. As I stretched my neck, I saw standing close to me that damn cat plush. I picked it up and stared blankly into its eyes. Fuck you, Jack. That was when everything went bad. I saw something coming out of the corners of the cat's eyes. A dark crimson began to ooze out of them. It was crying what looked like blood. I immediately dropped the thing and heard something emanating from the hallway. It was low, but it echoed in my ears. Drip, drip, drip. What the fuck? I said as I slowly crept towards the hallway. The noise got louder and louder. I was afraid it was going to wake up Lucy, but as I took one more look at her, she was sleeping soundly in her bed. I walked into the hallway and that's when I looked down, small puddles of red leading towards the front door. Drip, drip, drip. I slowly tiptoed towards the front door. My heart was beating so fast that I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Each beat sounded louder than the drips I was hearing. I even began to start shaking with fear. 
I couldn't believe I was getting scared, but I mustered up some courage and called out, Jack? Drip. 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 You don't belong here, Jack. Get out before I do something about it. Drip. 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 I finally reached the front door and placed my hand on the old doorknob. I slowly creaked the door open, and standing outside with the moonlight shining behind him and obscuring his face with shadows was Jack. My knees gave out. It was impossible. No way this was real. That this was actually happening. Jack slowly began to walk towards me. Each of his footsteps more and more dripping followed. He finally got close enough and the light from the inside of the house finally showed his face, or rather, the lack thereof. I was about to let out a scream until he suddenly got in front of me and covered my mouth, muffling my cry. He didn't have a face. It was completely gone. Completely smashed, and all that was left was a bloody concave mess that was dripping blood. This couldn't be real. I killed him. I killed Jack. He uncovered his hand from my mouth, and I was in awe, pulling me towards the bloody mess that was his face, and it dripped scarlet onto me. Last year, Jack finally went off the deep end and really laid into Lisa. She escaped with Lucy to my parents' house and told us what happened. Jack got drunk. Jack put his hands on Lisa in anger. Jack thought Lisa was going to leave him. So, a couple of days after that, I told Jack I wanted to talk to him, man to man. So, we went out to the woods behind the house, found a nice little clearing, and set up camp. We drank, and we had bro time. When Jack got drunk enough, I pulled out a bat from my bag, and I beat the shit out of him. But I couldn't stop. I wanted to give him a warning, but I was drunk and angry. I smashed Jack's face in, then I buried his body in the woods. I told Lisa that Jack got fed up with her and decided to run off. Drip, drip, drip. Droplets of blood fell on my face. I pleaded for forgiveness, but I knew it was to no avail. Uncle Luke? I turned around and saw sweet little Lucy standing at the foot of the front door. My face was stuck in horror, and I turned around towards Jack, but he was gone. I shuffled over to Lucy and squeezed her tight. Are you okay, Uncle Luke? She asked. I couldn't help but cry as she asked that, and a couple of minutes later, Lisa pulled up to the driveway and saw me in the state I was in. I didn't say a word to them, I just left. I didn't have a car, so I just walked. Lisa, of course, blew up my phone, but I didn't want to talk. I couldn't answer her. I'm in the woods right now at the place where I murdered Lucy's dad, Lisa's husband, my old friend. I'm typing this out right now as a confession. I can hear his footsteps coming in. Drip, drip, drip.